Hello to all of you. Welcome back to another video of our Five Reasons series. This time we will talk about corpus linguistics and we would like to give you five reasons for its importance. And as usual, I have an expert with me who is well into the topic much better than I am. She is one of Germany's leading corpus linguists, Anke Lüdeling from Berlin, also well known for her work in morphology. And last but not least, she's the secretary of Germany's Society of Linguistics. Welcome, Anke. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Okay. So, as usual, I will not introduce our guest any further. Just Google Anke Lüdeling's name and you will find her straightforwardly on the web. But just in case, here is her website. So, Anke, you've been around a lot. You've been at several universities. Let me ask you the usual question first. Why did you become a linguist? Was there any particular motivation that triggered your interest in the field? Yeah. Um, I, I grew up in a very tiny little village in Ostfriesland, East Frisia, oh. <laughs> with no other <laughs> linguists around. No, no, not many people. <laughs> and, I was, okay. uh, and when I was in high school, my godmother, who was uh, an, uh, an African scholar, mm -hmm. and she's at the University of Bayreuth, or was at that time, um, sent me all kinds of feminist literature. And then mm -hmm. there was a book by Louise Push. You probably don't I, know I've her heard yet. of her. Yes. Yeah, yeah, she, In fact, her friend Marlies Hellinger was one of my teachers. Okay. <laughs> and I read that book and I found that very fascinating mm -hmm. and radical. <laughs> I mean, think mm. 80s Ostfriesland. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And on the back of that book, it said that she was a linguist, Sprachwissenschaftlerin. Mm -hmm. So I thought, I will be that. <laughs> and then later, <laughs> okay. when I asked, when I actually, when I asked my, uh, we had to go to this kind of uh, a job center where, where they advised us on where to study, how to study, etc. Mm -hmm. I asked them, where can I study linguistics? They said, well, you're going to marry anyway, so you can do that. You will <laughs> never be able to make money with that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but right. then, of course, when I started linguistics, um, I found that fascinating. I never did any feminist li linguistics at all. Okay, that so that's reason, a actually. good motivation, <laughs> but let's now talk about the five reasons for the dealing with corpus linguistics or with corporate linguistics. Mm -hmm. One reason is certainly that modern linguistics uses corpora for exemplification as example banks. Would you subscribe to that? Of course. Um, the all, all linguists always have used real examples from literature to exemplify whatever grammatical statements they make. Mm. Look at any linguist for English linguistics and German linguistics in the 19th century already. They always do that. They always say blah, blah, blah about, I don't know, let's say genitives work this way, as you can see from blah, 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 blah. And then they give you all kinds of citations. Mm. Um, how do you find those citations? Um, intuition well, it was in the past, just intuition. No, no, no. They found citations. Uh, real, real literature citations oh from yeah, Goethe okay. and blah blah blah. Okay. They they've so always they done that. So the they library. had to read everything, and then you mm. have a new topic. You have to read everything again, and then you have all kinds of ki file card systems to have ex uh, examples for this construction, that construction, etc. Um, well, you can still do that, of course, but you can do that systematically now. You can just mm. type type a query and then find something, mm. and that's interesting. And I I just want to mention one thing. Um, what happens if you don't find an example of whatever you're uh, trying to look at in your corpus? Mm. Many people have said, well, if you don't find an example, things don't exist. That's, of course, not true, because um, language is infinite, and you always have only a finite sample. Every yeah. corpus is mm. only just a finite sample of whatever is there. But if something that you expect to be there is just obviously absent, that might mean something. Mm. And you have to be careful with your conclusions, but you can you can actually learn something from things not being there mm. and that's not and you can only do that using corpora okay and what i learned from colleagues who are using corpora and myself uh, is that corpus linguistics is especially important in language variation ah, so okay yeah could you argue for that point please yes um we all know that um, our linguistic behavior differs from situation to situation i mean just think of spoken informal dialogues or formal written term papers or whatever. Um, and we've always known that, but we've never known exactly which linguistic features depend on which other co-varying mm, variables, mm. as we call them, or independent variables. And that is um, the purpose of uh, uh, linguistic talk or yeah, so 
whatever text dialogues between yeah. people and and and, and also uh, features that are um speaker features here are features yeah, do yeah. i know you well yeah. do i like you etc mm -hmm. etc et oh, sure. you will of course, like me of course, of course i like yes. you and i would talk differently <laughs> now if i yeah. didn't okay course. and um but we can only study that systematically yeah. once we have corp uh, where all those um external co-varying variables are in the metadata mm -hmm. and we find much more fine-grained differences than we've always than, than we've thought previously mm. now corpora don't just come from out of the blue they have to be created they have to be developed and one principle of development is annotation mm. in what way can annotation be an argument for corpus linguistics mm. it's, it's hard work isn't it yeah but it's <laughs> helpful yes it, and it's necessary i think it's necessary for good scholarship actually because i think that's one of the most important um issues in linguistics is that you can make um, your analysis of the corpus data visible through annotation. Mm. I mean, just think of simple things like part of speech. And then you think, okay, we all know what a noun is, we all know what a verb is, but we don't all know um, whether a given participle in a given instance is a verb or um, in a particular an adjective. context. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and so yeah. if I, if I, do what an, I don't know an analysis on participles, and you, I want to convince you of some grammatical point about participles. You should be able to see my analysis. And yes, yeah. previously, what we did is we have a text and we an analyze that text and we categorize the words in that text. But we do that on a piece of paper in a word file, in an Excel file, on a file card, and then we give you the reader. The, the colleague, we only give you the, f the final finished analysis, but you cannot mm. see the interpretation step. Yeah. And annotation, finally, we can make that visible. And I think that's absolutely necessary mm. for scholarship. And I think we should never go back to. Um, yeah. So you would probably agree with me when I say modern linguistics is, well, almost impossible without corpus analysis. So we, we need corpora for quantitative analysis. Yes, we, we need corpora for many things, but yeah. I would not say that we need corpora for everything, but I think it depends on the research question. Mm -hmm. We also need other kinds of data, of course. Okay. I mean, that corp corpus data can be augmented with other kinds of data, and then there are, of course, research questions where corpora are not useful. But corpora are useful for any type of quantitative analysis because um, finally you can count. You can count the words, you can count categories in the annotation, you can have interesting um, more complex statistical models, finally, mm -hmm. that you couldn't mm -hmm. do before. Yeah. Um, you can you can have you can use that for building hypotheses about language that you can then test using other corpora or using other means like psycholinguistic experiments or something. And you can actually model language. That, that means you can build interesting uh, models that will predict what could happen and then you can mm. see whether that mm. really happens and that's something that's never been possible yeah. before okay now when we talked about this context uh, this, this content beforehand you told me there's one final reason a sort of you called it a meta reason for using corpora mm -hmm. what can we understand by that meta reason okay i think um li parts of linguistics are becoming more like science than like a humanity and mm -hmm. By that I mean that finally, in certain parts of linguistics, for certain areas of linguistics, we want to have results that are testable and reproducible, mm -hmm. and replicable first and then reproducible using other data. Yeah. Um, and corpus data, if it is available, if it is well documented, if you have enough metadata, and if you have annotation with everything mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. like meaning doc <coughs> documentation, evaluation, etc then only then can you reproduce results okay and yeah. so i think that's absolutely necessary i understand so thank you very much for this final plea as usual with our guests they could go on and on because right. they know so much about the field but we have to stop here because we want to produce short and concise videos thus we have to confine ourselves to just these five reasons so on behalf of all our viewers thank you very much for your help anke you're very welcome uh, and all the best for your future career thank you Thank you.